and welcome back here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. We are on this series, an exciting series on Washington State wines on the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. We are on a part two of six, looking at climate and key grape varieties. Okay, let's start to look at climate and grape varieties. First of all, climate. So we have all kind of discussed this a little bit before when we talked about its location. And remember, we are majorly talking here about the Columbia Valley because there is a small amount of production in the much greener and wetter part to the west of the Cascade Mountains. That's the Puget Sound ABA, so that's Seattle landscape. But we're majorly talking beyond the Cascade to the east where we find the Columbia Valley, including the likes of Yakima and Walla Walla, for example. So that's what we're generalizing and talking about here. So we have warm, sunny, dry conditions throughout most of the grape growing areas here, um, with cold nights that lead to wines with ripe fruit flavors and sometimes high alcohol, but often with some decent acidities, often towards medium to high acidities. Uh, the climate is classified as continental with hot summers and then rapidly cooling into autumn and very cold winters. Um, the average highs here, you'll notice. So uh, the numbers in these uh, circles, both the orange and the, uh, the purples, are in fact in Celsius and the Fahrenheit is on the left hand side. So we're talking about into the 30s in summer. Uh, so that's uh, uh, in, in between sort of 85 and 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, and the lows are um, you know, much more significantly lower there. But uh, we are talking about the, the range here between the daytime temperature and the nighttime temperature. And during the growing season at sort of 15 at night and 14 and then 10 cooler nights, this diurnal difference means we're able to get real good freshness in our grapes an elevated freshness, which really, really complements the really ripe characteristics that one can find. The Cabernets here and the Syrahs are exquisitely ripe, but then with beautiful amounts of freshness as well. So um, the Columbia Valley, which is our main area, that's what we call here wine country on the right hand side of this diagram. They are sheltered by the Cascades that you'll see just here. Uh, and that creates this kind of, and it's, in, it's in this kind of orangey color because it's a sort of a, an arid desert-like conditions which receive very little rainfall. So around 150 to 250 millimeters per year in this area. Most of our rain you'll see, uh, so that's around sort of six to eight inches. Um, much more of this, so 140 inches or 40 inches will, will fall on the Olympics, which is on the far coastal side of Washington state. Seattle sits in this middle point and then the Cascades. So this is the rainy area. And if you've ever been to Seattle, you'll understand what I mean, but it means dryness on our Eastern side of the state. And to give you some ideas of numbers here, um, I've actually done some climatic uh, comparisons uh, so the rainfall of Columbia Valley, typically around seven inches. Uh, Napa Valley is nearly um, two and a half times that amount. And Bordeaux is around three times of that amount. So we are talking about an area with really low rainfall. So we're going to have to need the likes of irrigation in this area uh, in order for the vines to, of course, to survive. Now, as always, it's great to hear from you. Please get in touch if you have experience with Washington State wines. Perhaps you live there. Perhaps you visit it. It would be great to hear from you. Put, put them in the comment section below this video. And if you have any general questions about the content that you find in this presentation, please do also get in touch. You'll find social media at the bottom of every slide. And also, for those of you enjoying this series, 
um, and you want to find out more and you want to listen to part three and part four, part five, part six, you can only do so if you go across to my e-learning portal. You'll find it at the bottom. That's winewithjimmy.com. So please go along there. Some excellent resources there. Lots of exclusive video content, things like written questions, multiple choice questions, flashcards galore, all to help you with your wine studies. Okay, so uh, we discussed this a little bit previously, but we are looking at the latitudes now. Uh, most of it is sort of 46 to 47, towards 48. I would say most of it here is uh, sort of 46 to 48 in terms of latitude. But the key thing to note here is that we are at quite high latitudes. Where are is at quite high latitudes. There you go. So we are experiencing therefore longer summer days with a very high diurnal range. Um, on average, the, um, the vineyards here get one hour longer each day in summer than Californian vineyards. So sugar is going to increase quite rapidly during the summer months, but then the cooler autumnal temperatures allow flavors and tannins to develop at a slower uh, accumulation. So the polymerization of tannins during the end of the season is not intense, it's actually quite gentle along, which gives you a lovely fine tannin in the likes of Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon. And then this is all backed up with a wonderful diurnal range, which gives you good acidities. So it's a really great area for viticulture. Uh, the average growing degree days, just taken here from the Washington State website, you'll see that we have Yakima, Walla Walla at somewhere around 2,600, 2,800, uh, the Horse Heaven of Hills AVA just over 3,000, and Red Mountain at just over 3,000 as well. To compare in terms of your degree days, uh, it's more than the likes of Burgundy, the Willamette and Bordeaux for most of these, um, really around the same amounts as Barossa, Oakville, but less than places like St. Helena, uh, Chianti Classico in Tuscany, and Lodi. And here is the Huglin Index map, gives you a wonderful view on this area. You'll see how cold it is across the Cascade Mountains, how still quite cold it is around, say, the Puget Sound, which is this area just here. That beyond that area, though, of course, this is our Columbia Valley, and we have the Huglin Index for most of these areas between 2,100 to about 3,000. Uh, so you are in the extensive part. So we are talking about warm to hot conditions uh, in this area as we go towards the likes of Lewis and Clark Valley, Walla Walla, Horse Heaven Hills, for example, in those areas. Great varieties in play across the Washington state. So Washington state grows a wide range of grape varieties. Actually, almost 70 different grape varieties are planted. Um, and it doesn't really have a massively dominant variety. Uh, it does produce more black grape varieties than white at about 60% uh, to 40%. And the top five variety, uh, grape varieties are here. So Cabernet Sauvignon at just over a quarter just under a fifth of Merlot and the same for Chardonnay and Riesling. And then about, uh, about a tenth of Syrah and then about 14% of all the other varieties. Now you'll notice a lot of Cabernet and Merlot from the state, Chardonnay as well. Uh, Riesling though, really the kind of standouts for me are Rieslings, Syrahs, Cabernets. Uh, they tend to be the, the kind of standout varieties, but of course, some of you will have great experience with the likes of Merlot and Chardonnay as well. So just the key grape varieties then. Um, Riesling is the most planted, uh, uh, sorry, was the most planted grape variety, but gradually plantings are being decreased. Uh, we just mentioned it's about 17% of the total today. The general style is off dry with around 10 to 15 grams per litre residual sugar. In recent years, there has been more confidence to experiment with more drier styles and also at the other end of the spectrum, more sweeter styles and either patriotized or even ice wine expressions. Although cool fermentation in stainless steel is pretty much standard practice, 
producers are now utilizing a variety of additional techniques, including skin contact, ambient yeast, and even lees aging and oak maturation for their Rieslings. Just to reiterate, it is the biggest single producer of Riesling in the world, Chateau Saint-Michel, that is the chateau you see there. Uh, as mentioned on a previous presentation as well, it's quite a big startling fact, a surprising fact to learn. Of course, we mentioned that they make 74 million litres per year, which is a very sizable amount of wine. Key black grape variety uh, I've put here. Now, Cabernet Sauvignon is very important, but this is actually more coming from my own mindset. And this is just the fact that there is a wonderful amount of Syrah being produced here. You'll often find wines being um, produced in a higher proportion of new oak, though there are uh, an increasing amount of producers utilizing older oak or larger format vessels, particularly for Syrah. Uh, you might find whole bunch fermentations and stem inclusion as well for Syrah. And the fantastic Gramercy Cellars here, this is their more standard approachable Syrah, the Lower East Syrah, Lower East because of its location in Washington State. But also there are some excellent single vineyard sites made by Greg Harrington uh, MS. So wonderful Syrah is being made from Washington State and by Gramercy Cellars. Okay, so that brings me to the end of part two, looking at climate and grape varieties. Join me for part three as we talk about topography and the Cascade Mountains and of course the geology that we find across the state. If you do have any comments, questions, concerns, please do get in touch. Comment on this video below. Make sure you click like and subscribe. It helps me, it helps you. And of course, if you do find yourself in the UK, then please, please, please come and say hi for a class, a glass, or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.